This is continuation of a blood text, amen. Next week we'll celebrate with Palm Sunday. Bring your shout out to us, amen. Right. Therefore being, I'm sorry, Romans 5, 1 through 9. Therefore being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, will be, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We want to use for a subject this morning, needed a substitutionary leader. I, I need to look at your name, but I'm going to need a little more interaction. I'm going to chill this morning. I can't help. Needed a substitutionary leader. Needed somebody to bleed for me, amen? Yeah, needed somebody to bleed for me. Before we preach, we glorify you. We come to this moment of God recognizing that James has nothing to say to your people. For James himself needs a word from you as well as your people. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you would speak to us, Holy Ghost of God. Hide me behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable. For thou art my rock and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ushers. The book of Romans is a didactic book, a doctrinal book. It's, it, it's one of the books that in seminary, New Testament, it's one of usually it's one of the required books that you have to study because it deals with the doctrine of Christianity. You see Paul going in and breaking down legalistic terms and explaining the separation between law and grace. And you ought to touch it up. Y'all ain't touch it, touch it for five times. I know Ms. Jack didn't make y'all touch it all last week, right? So y'all need ten times. Amen. But touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God we're not under the law. Thank God we're not under the law. Yeah, well, we'd be in some trouble. Some of us wouldn't have enough turtle doves. Wouldn't have enough pasta. We wouldn't have anything to eat because we'd have to sacrifice it all. But because of Jesus Christ, he was the sacrifice, the last sacrifice, the best sacrifice that God can give to redeem man. Amen. The book of Romans was written to the Christians in Rome. The Apostle Paul pins this. It's really a letter, but it turned out to be a book. Right. And he pins it from Corinth. It's believed he wrote this letter between 58 and 60 years after the death of Jesus Christ. This letter was later canonized and became doctrinal. I don't know if you know this, but it's amazing. They took 70 men and they put them in different cells in different rooms. And they gave them all the books that had been written, all of um, the books that you hear about, the lost books of the Bible. They were all placed before them, Mr. Field. And they told these 70 men, pick out the canon of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Seventy men separated would not come out of the cells until they, until they made their selections. 
There was many more than 66. I mean, a lot more. When they came out, to show you how the Holy Spirit worked, all of them came out with the same books. My God. My God. It's amazing how God moves. They had so many books to choose from. If I put books between before you and I right now, some of us who like sports, we look at the Sports Illustrated. We're not going to look at the Women's Digest. All right. Some of us are not going to look at Home and Garden. Mm -hmm. Some of us want to see Ebony or Jet. It's amazing. Out of all the books that were put in there, they all pulled the same books. Yes. And Romans was one of those books. Finnis Dates says this of the book of Romans. It contains the ABCs of Christian education. Martin Luther, the great reformer, if he had not read Romans, we would still be a part of the Catholic Church. My God. My God. Catholic Church was the first church. Every church is birthed out of the Catholic Church. Right. And as Martin Luther read about the grace of God, he was so tormented trying to live according to the law because no one can live according to it. Just think about it. We've all broke the Ten Commandments, haven't we? Yeah. Thou shalt not lie. Yeah. Thou yeah. shalt not cover. You just saw your neighbor's BMW. He said, I sure don't like that. I wish I had me one. Uh -huh. yeah. The law was so easy to break. Yeah. And Martin Luther, being a Catholic father, a Catholic priest, he was going through torment every day. He started reading daily the Book of Romans, and the Book of Romans set him free. And then he wrote a thesis, 95 thesis, which is really 95 arguments against the Catholic Church yeah. based on them operating in the law and not under grace. This led Martin Luther to write the, the 95 theses, but he also came up with some theological terms that were powerful. And I just throw them out at you. They were Latin. Solified by faith alone. Yes, Lord. Sola Christus by Christ alone. Sola scripture. Sola scripture. By scripture alone. All right. And then sola gratia. By grace alone. Mm -hmm. And he rocked the word with those terms because everybody was operating under the law. Yes, yes. And he started telling them, you say mm -hmm. by faith alone. My God. If you and I get into heaven, I believe we will, mm -hmm. we're going to get in there by faith. I, I need you to look at your neighbor. Those people that tell you, I, I, I'm from Missouri. You got to show. You better believe that Jesus died for you. You, you better believe Jesus got out the grave for you. And you and I better believe he sits at the right hand side of the Father. Because we are saved by faith. We're not saved by how kind we are. We're not saved by how we treat others. How to go. We are saved by faith alone. We're saved by Christ alone. Mm -hmm. Help us, Holy Ghost. Yes, we're saved by Scripture. Yes. And then we're saved by grace alone. Yes, Lord. Right. So I'm going to the first, first verse. All right. And listen to what Paul says. Therefore, being justified by faith. Mm -hmm. Before Jesus came, everybody was handcuffed. Oh. Everybody. That's Moses. That's Noah. Everybody was handcuffed. Nobody was really free because of the sin in the garden. Yes. Adam's sin put handcuffs on all of us. But when Jesus came along and those who accepted him, justified is a legal term that means acquitted. All right. I did the crime. But I'm acquitted. Yes. I wish I had help here, y'all. Yes. Every time I think about acquitted, I ain't got but one image in the 1990s. <laughs> y'all already know. Yes. Johnny Cochran worked that day. Yes. He said, if the glove don't fit, yes. you must acquit. Yes. And I remember, I remember OJ Simpson putting on the glove. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have the right pad, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> OJ was putting his fingers in there. And OJ wanted you to see, he made sure. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is for you and I. Yeah. The glove does not fit by the grace of God. Thank God our sins are covered in the blood. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you. I get happy just thinking about it. Thank you, Lord. Because I know that I know that I know. Yeah. If 
I'd have died in my sins. I already know where I would have been. I thank God for the grace of God. He said, therefore, being justified by the faith, we have peace with God. We're no longer at variance with God. We have peace. We're, we're no longer at strife with him. That, that, that's why Miss Doris would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and talk to him. Mm. Because we're, we're not at strife with God. Yes, Lord. But you know, there was a time when we weren't seeking God. We couldn't hardly pray. That's right. That's right. Have you ever noticed whenever you want to spend time with God, the phone rang? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed when you want to spend time with God, you cut everything off? I, I ain't going to be bothered. It's amazing. There's always something trying to interrupt relationship time. And God is just like a girlfriend or a boyfriend. He wants you to spend some time with him. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Y'all ain't saying, oh, come on, you, you, you didn't get whoever you got. That's right. Not spending no time with him. That's right. That's right. I ain't got time. I just, I want this so busy, but you weren't too busy for that. That's right. That's and that's how we have to be with God. We have to set time aside. Well, no, no matter what it is, I'm going to give God this 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to give God this 15 yeah. minutes. And sometimes just cut it off the radio yeah. and drive it in the car. You can spend time with God just talking to him right there. That's right. That's right. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I only have peace with God because of the reconciling work on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. When God looks at us, can I touch this? That ain't, that, that ain't sacrilegious, huh? <clears throat> Y'all ain't called the DS on me. I mean, I'm all right? Yeah. I'm all right? No, that don't mean that. <laughs> God sees us through the cross. Yeah. The cross yeah. covers everything. Yes, no. yeah. The cross, God gets cross eyed mm. when he looks at us. Yes, no. He remembers what his son did. For us. Yes. Everything that he did is covered through the cross. Yes. Verse 2. But whom we also have access by faith unto this grace where we stand. We have this access by Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Most of us don't glory in tribulations, do we? No. No. Trials, time of testing. No. I heard people say, well, God tested you to see what's in you. Can I help us this morning? Can I help all please, of us? Please. Just lean in. I, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's really an oxymoron. Come on. God is omniscient. He's all right. Yes, he is. He ain't testing me to see what's in me. He already knows. He already knew what's in me. He already knows my ending from my beginning. That's right. He already know what I'm not going to do. He told, what did he tell Peter? You're going to deny me three times. And he did. Peter said, not so, Lord. Huh. Before the cock crow, you're going to, before, he had denied him three times. That's right. That's right. Peter went even further than that. He cussed the woman out. Mm -hmm. My point is, Jesus already knows what we're going to do. He, I hear people say, he just tested you to see what, no, he's not testing me. If you ask me, I'll tell you why he allows the test. Why? To develop me. Because he says, tribulation, working patience. Yes, Lord. That there's a reason why we go through things. Mm -hmm. And patience gives me experience. Yes. Why is experience important? It's important because when I go through one thing yes. and I remember God brought me out, now. it makes me remember while I'm going through this yes. present trial. Yes. The same God that brought me out last time is, has not lost any power. He's still able to bring me out this time. How about develop me, Lord? Develop me, Lord. And experience gives me hope. Mm. Mm. While going through, can I use you, Mr. Adams? Yep. While going through in the hospital, he was able to keep hope. Yes. Right. Because he knew what God did the last time. See, that's why God allows trials and tribulations. Uh -huh. Because he will build you up in such a way like a football coach. Yes, Lord. A football coach will get you ready, put you on that sled. Mm. 
Because they recognize you're going to run into some boys one day for poor nature's scrolls. And they're all corn fed boys. They're going to be 260 pounds. And so then two or three coaches get on a sled and they tell you to push it up and down the field. Why? They're developing you, getting you ready. Because in the fourth quarter, they need somebody who can open up a hole for Joe Washington Jr. Every time they dug in his back, they pulled up flesh. Yeah. They 
for the usually if they whipped you, they didn't crucify you. But God said he deserved, he got to have death penalty to cover all the sins of the world. Any of y'all seen the movie Glory? The whooping Denzel took ain't nothing compared to what Jesus took. Every time they hit him, Every time they hit him, when they write his right, they say with digging to his back and flesh. And digging that pull up on it, and he'd snatch up, and his flesh would come out. They beat him all night long. His face was all puffied up. They say his mother couldn't even recognize him. She just knew that was her son. He lost six pints of blood. It was a whole lot of bloodshed to get us saved. You ought, you ought to tell somebody. If he shed that much blood for me, I don't need to go back to the world. All right. I'm going to end here. This is when it gets good to me. The ninth verse. Much more then, being now acquitted. How am I acquitted? By his blood. If Jesus has not shed his blood, we are not free. God had it set up that way. Yeah. In order for sins to be forgiven, yeah. something had to die. My Lord. So he made his son a body, sent it through Mary, through 42 generations. And they, they said they beat him all night long. But they messed up, y'all. They hung him on the cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's how they messed up this thing. He said, and if I, Come on. if I be lifted up, yeah. Yeah. I will draw all men under me. Yeah. They'd have been better off just putting him in the ground. Yeah, yeah. But when they lifted him up, Come on. everybody recognized he is the Christ. Yes, yes. The centurion said this. He had seen many people die. Yeah. But he had never seen the sun refuse to shine. Yes, Lord. The moon dripped in blood. The stars fell from their sockets. Yeah. The earth rocked like a drunk man. The veil of the temple was torn yeah. into. And what did the centurion say? He said, Shirley! Yes, Shirley! Yeah. What the Baptist folk in here? Shirley! Yeah. This is the Son of God. Yeah. I might as well finish the story now. Yeah. Yeah. They put him in a bar too because he wasn't going to be there long. Yeah. And then three days later, Mr. Lefty, they said he got up, yeah, got up. not with some power, yeah. but with all power. Power to make you walk right. Power to make you talk right. Power to make you think right. Power to make you love right. If it had not been for the blood of Jesus, we would still be lost. What can wash away my sin? And I do have a question for God. I don't know if he'll, I don't know if he'll entertain a question from a little peer like me when I get there, but I have a question. How is it you take crimson blood and you wash our sins and they pure white? Mm -hmm. The color red is staining. But it's a crimson blood. Wash away our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Paul says in this text, and I skipped it, he said this. Peradventure, suppose a righteous man, one will die. But he died while we were still doing our thing. I know we'll consider dying for our family members. Am I right about it? Some of them at least, huh? <laughs> Jesus gave his blood for the whole world. Some would never accept it. But the blood is still there. Some don't even want you to hear about that. And I, I end here. I was on the side of the bed of a man one time who was dying. And asked him, could we pray for him? He said, no. One thing I will say, at least he was consistent. He 
didn't want God when he was healthy. And he didn't want God on his deathbed. Oh, but you should have saw how he looked when the angel came again. Terror in his face. He wasn't at peace. We want peace with God. I'm praying our deaths of hundreds of years, 7,500 years in the future. But we want peace. When it's our time, we don't want to we want to have peace knowing I'm going to lay my head on Jesus' breast. And I thank God for St. Paul. I probably should have said this on tape, but I may get some calls, but I thank God I'm not at a church. Well, I've got to always tell you, God gonna bless you with some money. I do. I thank God that I don't have to preach a prosperity gospel to hear you say amen. And I'm gonna say this in love. Yes, God does give us prosperity, he does. But it comes with the package. You accept him as Lord and Savior, it comes with the package. It's just like you get a job and they give you health insurance. You're like, I got health insurance, but it came with the package. <laughs> but I thank God for the maturity, seriously. That I don't have to sit here every Sunday and tell you, He's going to give you a house. He's going to give you a car. He's going to give you a husband. He's going to give you a wife. In this life, if you talk to God, God will bless you. But I will say this in closing. I haven't been able to wrap my mind around if prosperity was so important, why did God send his son in here poor? If, if it was that important, Miss Stevenson, if it was that important, if that was the ultimate thing to have, material wealth, why did he send Jesus who walked amongst streets paved with gold? Why would he send him into the world and send him to Nazareth? Because the most important thing we can have, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all that other stuff will be added. That, that prosperity material wealth, is that for you to have? It's going to be added. But make sure we're seeking God, the word of God for the people.